Okay, good morning everybody. Grandma Diane here. It's time for Grandma Diane's story time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Today's book is called Wombat Walkabout and it's written by Carol Diggory Shields and it's illustrated by Sophie Blackall. All right, Wombat Walkabout. Have you ever seen a wombat? Oh, I don't think I have. They live in Australia, don't they? Yes, they live in Australia. You are right. So perhaps this book <laughs> takes place in Australia. Oh, look at all the end pages with the pretty little pictures and stuff. Isn't that cool? All right, well, let's see what this book is about. Wombat Walkabout by Carol Diggory Shields and illustrated by Sophie Blackall. And it's published by Dalton Children's Books. Ah, okay. Well, here we have some definitions. That's interesting. Um, some Australian words you will encounter in this book. The first one is wombat, a stout, sturdy Australian mammal with a large blunt head, it has small ears and a very short tail. It has short, stubby, but very powerful legs with broad claws, which it uses for digging. Hmm. Why don't you read Walkabout for me? Walkabout. To go for a long walk. Aboriginals use this period for spiritual enlightenment. And a dingo is an Australian wild dog. Okay, next one. A uh, waddle tree. Waddles, which belong to the Mesosa family, are the, are the most widespread of Australian plants. And billabong is a water hole. That's a cool thing to know. Okay, eucalyptus. Um, a gum tree. I've seen those. Yeah. Um, eucalyptus are far and are far and away the dominant trees in Australia. Wow, kookaburra! It's a la the laughing kookaburra is a common Australian bird. The sounds made by this bird range from a few chuckles to a pronounced coo ha, but the main song is a rollicking laugh. <laughs> hmm. Swag, the old term for a Vagabonds, head, bed roll, pack, or sack. Hmm, cool. All right. So we've got some Australian words now that we know, and we're going to start the story. Oh, my. Uh, these must be the wombats. Aren't they cute? They do have little, little itty-bitty tiny ears. Look at their tiny little feet. Do you see a tail? This guy's got, you can see his little tiny tail. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> Early one morning when the sun came out, six woolly wombats went walkabout. <laughs> they didn't see the dingo with the hungry eye. I've a hunch my lunch just walked by. <laughs> and remember the dingo was a wild dog, right? And he said his lunch just walked by. <laughs> now you can see the tails, the tiny, tiny little tails. Hmm. Here's the, see the dingo behind the tree? Yeah. Six woolly wombats walking one by one past a golden wattle blooming in the sun. The last little wombat, whose name was Clive, stopped to smell the flowers. Dot, dot, dot. We see that in just about every book, don't we? So this is the a wattle. Uh, it was a kind of tree, right, or plant? Mm -hmm. Oops. Then there were five. Uh-oh. What happened? I think the dingo got that one. What do you think? Five woolly wombats ambling right along crossed the wooden bridge at the billabong. 
The last little wombat, young Theodore, stopped to throw a pebble. Dot, dot, dot. Then there were four. Four woolly wombats trekking down the track. Heard a kookaburra laughing like a maniac. The last little wombat, whose name was Lee, stopped to have a listen. There's the kookaburra up in the tree. And they're still walking along on their walkabout. Well, turn the page, Grandma. Then there were three, three woolly wombats, all in a row, passed by the wood where the gum trees grow. The last little wombat, known as Prue, stopped to pick a gum nut. And then there were two, <laughs> uh-oh, <laughs> two woolly wombats, Jen and Jack, thought it awfully quiet, so they looked back. No little wombats, that's not good. They jumped off the track and hid in the wood. Along came the dingo, his tail a wag, and on his back a big swag bag. The swag was lumpy and jumping all about. That bloke's got our mates. We've got to get them out. Hmm. You ever see a dog smoking a pipe? <laughs> Silly. <laughs> now wombats are diggers, so Jen began to dig while Jack gathered armloads of sticks and twigs. What are they doing? They dug a great pit, wide and deep. They covered it over, then Jen began to weep. I'm a poor little wombat all alone, lost in the woods so far from home. The dingo licked his lips and said with a yelp, don't worry, little wombat, I'm coming to help. So is this the pit they dug? I think it probably is, and she's on the other side of the pit, isn't she? Crack went the branches. The dingo took a dive. <laughs> look at them look at each other. They knew they had him. <laughs> the swag opened and out popped Clive. Then the others climbed out. One, two, three. Good work, mates, they said. What wombat glee. <laughs> They're pretty happy to be out back together, aren't they? <laughs> oh, my. They better look out, though. Six woolly wombats, good as new, walked along together two by two. Jack, Jen, Theodore, Prue, Clive, and Lee had a lovely walkabout. And then home for tea. <laughs> oh, well, that was a fun little story. I was a little worried there for a while. I thought maybe we lost all our, lost all our wombats, but I guess we didn't. <laughs> And the end pages again are the all those pretty little, pretty little drawings of stuff that they had. And here they are. I bet if we open this up, yeah, like that, we get the whole idea of the wombats out for a walk. <laughs> there they all are. All right. Well, that was a good story today with a happy ending. And the, the wombats used their skill that they have with their digging ability to save their, their mates. They dug that hole and got the ding, ding, <laughs> dingo, ding, ding, dingo, <laughs> to fall into the hole, and that's how they got him out. So that's pretty, pretty good for them. Well, tomorrow is Friday, and my husband and I are, are going on a little adventure tomorrow. So Grandma Diane's story time will be here at 11 o'clock and Elsie will be leading story time. 
And what book are you reading tomorrow? Platypus. Lost. Platypus. Platypus. Lost. A platypus is another, is that another Australian animal? No. No? Oh. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. Oh, okay. So tomorrow's platypus lost with Elsie doing the reading. Sounds like a fun time to me. Thanks, Elsie, for doing that for Grandma. Oh, and by the way, today is Elsie's 13th birthday. So she's now a teenager, so you'll have a brand new teenager reading your story tomorrow for you. She's looking at me with those teenage eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that's all our story time for today. So have a good day. Get outside, get some exercise, take a little walk about. Watch out for the dingoes and the wombats. And Elsie will see you tomorrow with Grandma Diane's story time at 11 o'clock. So we'll see you then. Bye.